test this out. So if I move the door sensor. Studio door opened. How good is that? Really useful functionality here. The fact that you could have it on your front door. If the door does get opened and you're in another part of your home, your Alexa's close by, it's going to tell you the door's been opened. I think that's absolutely amazing functionality. Hi there. Today we're unboxing a Sonoff, a Zigbee bridge. So details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So together with the bridge here, we've got four other accessories. One's a wireless switch. Then we have a temperature and humidity sensor, motion sensor, and wireless door and window sensor there. So let's open this all up and see what you get in there. Okay, so I've laid out everything you get in the packaging and lined up all the items you get in each package. So just to highlight the black cards you can see just below there, they're quality control cards given by Sonoff and each of the accessories come with 3M sticky pads as you can see. Each package also comes with a user guide and each user guide is multi-language. So let's take a look at each of the items one by one. Let's start with the Zigbee bridge. So in terms of build quality, a matte white finish and good strong build quality. Dimensions wise, it's 6.2 centimeters by 6.2 and two centimeters thick. You've got a groove going around the side here, as you can see. And in terms of connection points, you've only got a one connection point for input power and that's a micro USB. And then you've got a pairing button just over here. Coming around the back here, you can see it says Wi-Fi Zigbee. So the way this works, this device connects to your Wi-Fi network, and then all the accessories you see there, they connect to the bridge. You could say it's a bit like a Philips Hue bridge. Similar concept there, and Philips Hue also uses Zigbee too. And looking below, you can see some round areas here. I would have thought there'd be some rubber pads on there to stop it slipping on a surface, but there's nothing there, just a slight recess. Looking on the back, you can see the input is 5 volts, 1 amp. Next we have the wireless switch and same build quality again, matte finish on there, strong plastic and if you see the way it presses, the whole switch moves downwards. If I press at a corner, it doesn't really work too well, you can't see anything happening, you've got to really hit it on the centre. And in terms of dimensions, this is 4.2 centimetres by 4.2 and 1.6 centimetre thick and you can see a slight groove there. Another one there that allows you to just pull it off and replace the battery. Coming around the bottom there, you can see the model and the battery it takes. And if I flip around the edges, nothing more on there. Next, we have the temperature and humidity sensor. Again, build quality is similar to the other items, but with this one, you've got a button at the side. Grooves there and there and a slight label there. This is probably covering up the battery, so if you pull it out, then it activates the device. You've got some holes over here to pick up the temperature and humidity. And if I come around the back, again, highlights model and the battery required for it. Next, we have the PIR. Build quality is similar, except you've got a plasticky area here for the sensor itself. In terms of dimensions, it's 3.9 centimeters by 3.4, and top to bottom, it's 2.8 centimeters deep. You can see here, there's a slight pin. You've got a bit of plastic. If I pull that out, that will activate the device. And you can see around the size, there's a notch there and another notch there for pulling this off. And coming around the bottom, again, model and battery model details there. Finally, we have the wireless door and window sensor. Build quality is the same as the other products, all matte white finish on there. And you can see a slight hole over there. And if I come around the sides, you've got a notch here for pulling it up and another notch on the other side. Coming around the back on this one, you can see model and battery details there. And in terms of dimensions, this is 4.7 centimeters by 2.6 and 1.3 centimeters thick. And this one is 3.2 centimeters by 1.5 and 1.3 centimeters thick. Let's make a start at setting up the Zigbee bridge. So I'm at my Android phone. If I go to the Play Store, the app we're after is Ewe Link. This is the one. If I click install, let's give it a moment. Now it's installed, let's click open. We've got a service and privacy policy here. If I click read, then we agree to that. Next, we need to sign up an account. So let me do that off camera. Now I've signed up, let me click login. And this is what you're initially presented with. So first thing we need to do is click add, quick pairing. Now it's saying please set the device into pairing mode and choose a Wi-Fi for device pairing, highlighting the fact only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is supported, five gigahertz is not supported. Now you can see below, if I click here, it just goes straight to Wi-Fi. So this is indicating that it doesn't have 
permissions to location services. So if I go to apps on my phone, we find the eWe Link app. Go to permissions, location, allow only while using the app. That save now, so if I now come back. So there you go, my Wi-Fi network is now selected. And just to highlight, a bit strange, I've had to do that manually. Generally, apps would ask for permissions to location services and automatically then select Wi-Fi. So not sure what's happened here with their app but keep it in mind if you're having issues picking up the Wi-Fi. Now, let me enter in my Wi-Fi password off camera. Next, let's power up the Zigbee bridge. So I've got a micro USB to USB cable here. If I plug that in there and looking around the back, you've got the pairing button there and you'll need a pin to get this into pairing mode. And if I hold on for about 10 seconds, there you go one long flash and two short flashes on there so if I now click next on my phone and there you go it's added in successfully now so if I click done device is connecting to Wi-Fi it may take a few minutes to go online got it and there you go there's the device so looking in there nothing's added in in terms of accessories so now we can move on to adding in the accessories so let's start with the smart switch so to get this working first of all we need to open it up so you see the notches either side there got a screwdriver and if i gently put that in you can just unclip it and then open it up and that's what that reveals and you can see there there's a cover on the battery so if i now pop that up you can see there's a complete piece of paper. So not really something you could pull out. You'd have to take the complete bottom of it off and then you put it in and then coming in close, you can see there's a reset here and an LED there. So now if I get my pin again, hold on to it for a moment, LED just flashed. So now if I click add, give it a moment, just to highlight, green light is flashing on there, indicating it's trying to add in one of the accessories. And there you go, you can see on the phone, it's now said one device found. So I can literally just click next to that as it's found it, and I know it's just one device, and it's just there, as you can see. So if I come back for a second, there's the bridge, and there's a the device. So now, I can close this back up again, and another thing to highlight, if I bring it round, you can see an arrow on there, and on here, there's an arrow. So you just gotta match them up and then close it back up. And there you go. If I press it now, click OK to that. And there you go, you can see the click events. So double click's possible as well. And if I come out for a moment, it's normally better if you come out and then go back in, you can see it. The latest one is shown here just below, as you can see. So if I do a single click, there you go, clicked and double click. So there's two options that seem to be available. Let's try long clicking it. There you go, long press is available as well. So three different options. Single, double, try triple. Now that's just a single click is seen as, and then long. So good, one button with three different options available for pressing it. Next, let's move on to the PIR. Same thing again, we need to open this up. So notch over here, if I put my screwdriver in, there you go, paper's there, take it out, put the battery in, and for this one, pins over here, and again, just to note, you've got the arrows, so just link the arrows up so you know you've got the right direction for this. So now if I press the reset button here, the light on the PIR should flash. There you go, it's flash. So now if I click add, let's give it a moment. There you go, found the device, click next to that, and you can see it there, motion detected. Clicking on there, it just gives the events when motion is detected. So now coming back from there, we can now move on to the temperature sensor. Same thing again, you need to open it up. There you go, battery's just there. Easier just to put a screwdriver in there and pull it off. Take the plastic out. And the same thing again, arrows pointing in a direction. Just make sure they match up. Now with the temperature sensor, you just hold on to the button here for a few seconds. And now if I click add, let's give it a moment. There you go, it's found it. Click next to that. 
that's added in. Next, let's move on to the window and door sensor. Similar thing here as well. Let's pop it open. There you go, plastic comes off. With the case open, just to show the reset pin, what happens in there, if I just hold on to it for a moment. There you go, you can just see a red light which started flashing. So now if I click add, you can do this with the cover off, as long as the battery's in there. There you go, found that one, click next to that, and we'll just close up the cover. Now that the door sensor's added, let's show it in action. If I open it up, you can see it says opened. Close it, it says closed. Works pretty well, performance isn't too bad. Now that all the accessories for the Zigbee Bridge are added, what I've also done is added a smart plug, a Sonoff one. So this one isn't as part of the Zigbee Bridge itself, it works directly on Wi-Fi. So what I've done, I've got a plug plugged in to a lamp over here. So if I press the override button here, turn it on and off, and coming over to the Ewe Link app, I can turn it on from there and turn it off just to show. Now, this is where things can get a bit more interesting. So now if I go to scenes, click on add. If this triggers, click add to that. We can click a smart device. Let's pick the switch. And if it's clicked, it's a single click. We can say we want to turn on the smart plug. We can save that save to that and we call it turn on lamp save to that and now let's create another one click add smart device switch again we'll double click and for this one what we'll do the smart plug will turn off and we'll call this turn off lamp and we'll save that now if i take the smart switch press it once turns on turns off how cool is that so you can set up your own sort of rules to do different things so it, together with setting up via smart scenes, you can also integrate with IFTTT. And this will allow you to integrate with other smart tech, just not using Sonoff alone. You can integrate with Philips Hue, for example. Now this is just one example of using it. So obviously turning it on, double click, turning it off. You also have long press, so you can get that to do other things as well. So next I've created some smart scenes and you can see door open. So if the door's opened, it will turn on the smart plug and if the door's closed it will turn off the smart plug and just to show this in action turns the light on turns the light off so this can be connected via a plug the actual scene itself or directly to a bulb so very useful to have especially if you're coming home late or you wanted an area just to turn on automatically when a door's opened it's very useful there Next one to show is motion detected turn on light and for this one what I've done if motion detected it will turn on the light and looking below I've created another one if no motion is detected turn off the light here. So now if I put my hand out lights turned on let's give it a moment see so if I stand really still for a bit it should pick up the fact that there's no motion going on and just turn off the light. And there you go, the light's turned off now as it picked up that there's no motion going on. Next one to demonstrate is the temperature sensor. So I've created a smart scene where if the temperature is above 27 degrees, it will turn on the plug here. Now, if I take the temperature sensor, before I do that just to show, the current temperature is 26 degrees. If I grab it now, just cover the end, and that should make it warm up should take it to 27 quite quickly and there you go it's gone to 27 degrees and the lights turned on so very clever functionality with these devices you can link them up to do all sorts of clever stuff now if we come over to IFTTT and if I go to get more create my own and clicking on the plus, this is where things can be linked up to other devices. So if we search for Ewe Link, this is the one we're after. Scroll all the way down, and you can see down there, Zigbee Wireless Switch Pressed. You can see the switch in there, and you can get it to perform an action depending on what's happened. So if you click Pressed, that'll be a single click. Then you can perform the action required. And just to note, you're not limited to just smart tech. You could even get it doing other things for you, even sending an email, sending a notification to you, etc. Now coming back just to show the other ones. 
Then you've got door sensor coming back from there. Zigbee motion sensor. There you go, the PIR sensors there. And then we've got humidity goes above or below and temperature goes above or below. Let's go for temperature first. You can see the temperature sensor there. And then humidity wise, the temperature sensor is there as well. So all the items integrate with IFTTT. So in terms of integration, much better than the RF bridge. You can see all the items appearing in IFTTT and that way you can link in other tech that have IFTTT support. It's a very impressive functionality from this. Next thing I wanted to show was the push notifications with some of the devices. So if I go over to the door sensor, click over here, and you've got push notification there. So if I turn that on, and now coming back from there, temperature sensor wise, if we look in there, there's no push notifications on this one. PIR sensor, if I click there, you've got push notifications for that. And the switch, no push notifications for that one. So now if I open the sensor here, light turns on, light turns off, and if we look down here, you can see a push notification come through to your phone. Now, performance of the push notification is a little bit intermittent. There you've seen it come through really quickly, but at some instances when I've been testing this, it's been pretty slow. So if I now click there, it will go to the notice and show you the push notifications that have come through. Now, if I move my hand there, there you go, PIR sensor move, clicking on there, see, there you go, just had to refresh it and it appeared. So it works, works pretty well, but be aware, it depends on the cloud connectivity there, how quickly you'll get the notification. Obviously it will come to the bridge and then that will push it out over the internet and then that will come back again. Next, just to show how it integrates with both the Google Home and the Amazon Alexa products. If I go with the Google Home first, you know how to do this. It's very straightforward. Going here, set up device, have something already set up, and just link in the service using your credentials for the EWE Link app. So you can just see it there. Now, if I come back, I've already done this. And if I scroll down to the bottom, just to show, I've renamed the door sensor and the temperature sensor to have Sonoff at the beginning. So the switch isn't shown and neither is the PIR sensor. If I go into the door sensor, there's no options available in there to do anything. Same with the temperature sensor, nothing available. If I unmute my Google Home. The microphone is back on. I can say, is the Sonoff door sensor open? The Sonoff door sensor is closed. Now if I open the door sensor and say, is the Sonoff door sensor open? The Sonoff door sensor is open. There you go. So you can get a status if a door has been left open or closed. So I've had a look in routines. There's not a possibility of actually being informed if someone's opened the door. Now the next one being the temperature one. So if I say, what's the temperature on the Sonoff temperature? The Sonoff temperature is set to 26 degrees. There you go. So works well, integrates in, but the only, I guess, slight lacking there is the fact you can't get an announcement if someone's opened the door. Now, just to show the same functionality on the Amazon device. So if I go to the app here, go to skills and games, and the skill you're after is EWE link. So it's that one there, enter in your credentials, and get it linked in. Once you've linked it in, if I go to all devices, Come down to the bottom and you can see Sonoff door sensor and Sonoff temperature. And if I go in there, you can see the door sensor gives a status it's in. So what's clever about this, if I go into create a routine, I've created one called studio door open. So if I go in there and you can see if the studio door's been opened, it's gonna say studio door opened. Really good functionality here. So if I test this out, so if I move the door sensor Studio door opened. How good is that? Really useful functionality here. The fact that you could have it on your front door. If the door does get opened and you're in another part of your home, your Alexa's close by, it's going to tell you the door's been opened. I think that's absolutely amazing functionality. So now if I close it, now coming back, having a quick look, 
at the sun off temperature you can see there there's nothing else in there you can't change anything you can go into settings and rename it but that's it so now if I unmute my Alexa I can say what's the temperature on sun off temperature the sun off temperature temperature is 27 degrees there you go is the sun off door sensor open sun off door sensor is closed Studio door opened. Is the Sonoff door sensor open? Sonoff door sensor is open. There you go. Excellent functionality. So you can use your voice to obviously find out the status of things. So just to highlight, neither the PIR or the button is in both the Google Home or the Amazon Alexa apps. But in terms of functionality, it's great on the Amazon Alexa. The fact you can get an announcement if the door's been open and even get a status of temperature and the status of the door being open or closed just by asking. So there you go, you've seen the unboxing and setup of this Sonoff Zigbee bridge. Excellent bit of tech here. I like the fact that you have all these different types of sensors and you can integrate them with your other smart tech. Now it works pretty well, no issues there. I actually prefer it to the Sonoff RF bridge as integration with IFTTT seems to be pretty good with this. But there are a couple of limitations with this. So now if I click on scenes, what you can do when you're adding scenes is limited. It's just an if and then do this action and that's it. You can't bulk it up with other things, which is a little bit of a disappointment. With Smart Life, if you had all Smart Life tech, you can bulk it up to do other actions. So turn on one device, then turn on another device. Can't see that option in the Sonoff app. So a little bit disappointed there. But other than that, if you're after some extra tech for your Sonoff smart home, this is definitely worth getting. There you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.